Nothing is permanent. Maybe at this phase, this age I'm at, I'm 50 years old as I'm recording this video for you, and I wish someone would have grabbed my shoulders and shaken me when I was in my 20s and 30s to let me know that all emotions, even really high amazing ones and really crappy ones when you're at the lowest of your low, aren't permanent. You have to look at it like, you know, they call it a hockey puck in business. Like hockey puck is like doing all the effort, energy, investment, and you're going down, right? A hockey puck is down and then up, right? It's like, it's like all the energy to start a business, the funds, the setting it up, the mistakes, that's going down. Then all of a sudden you get momentum and boom, you get the, you get the skyrocket of the longer part of the hockey stick going up. But what no one tells you is at the end of the higher part of the hockey stick, it goes down again and then up and then down and then up. And that's really the way life is. I mean, think about it. Um, you don't know short unless you know tall. You don't know hot unless you know cold. You don't know happy unless you know sad. You don't know ecstatic, uh, like over the moon excited unless you probably know a little bit of depression. So I think it's designed by God, by the universe that you don't get to have the success, the happiness, unless you go through the crap. So. Whatever you're going through right now, know that it won't last, especially if you take action to make sure it doesn't. Especially if you write down what your compelling future is. What if you wrote down what you're no longer to accept again in the situation you're in, whether it's the job, the boyfriend, the friends, like set boundaries so it's the learning lesson. So the curve comes down and you learn, but it'll come back again. And, and I think here's the other side. Happiness, the ecstatic, perfect family around, kids great, that doesn't last either. Now, I don't mean that, to, I'm not trying to be depressed. Depressing, what I wanna say is be grateful and cherish the moments. Overlook the stupid stuff in life. Don't worry about the things that when you're 90, if you looked back, you'd say, why the hell did I waste a moment worrying about that? Like if you're in a moment, if you're in a space, if you're in a place right now, maybe things are going great with your boyfriend or girlfriend, great with your job, great with your income, great with your career, great with your health. You know what? Know that it probably won't last forever. So take it in, be grateful, pray to God, appreciate what you have, go to bed, say your prayers or practice gratitude because we live in this hockey stick environment and that's okay. You'd much rather live in that hockey stick environment so you understand the opposite of happiness, the back and forth, cold, hot, short, tall, happy, sad, right? Complexity, craziness, happiness, abundance. You'd rather live there. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So the person's entire state of being when they start their day is in the past. So what does that mean? The familiar past will sooner or later be predictable future. So if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny and you can't think greater than how you feel or feelings have become the means of thinking, by very definition of emotions, you're thinking in the past. And for the most part, you're gonna keep creating the same life. So then people grab their cell phone, they check their WhatsApp, they check their texts, they check their emails, they check Facebook, they take a picture of their feet, they post it on Facebook, they tweet something, they do Instagram, uh, they check the news, and now they feel really connected to everything that's known in their life. And then they go through a series of routine behaviors. They get out of bed on the same side, they go to the toilet, they get a cup of coffee, they take a shower, they get dressed, they drive to work the same way, they do the same things, they see the same people, they push the same emotional buttons, and that becomes the routine, and it becomes like a program. So now they've lost their free will to a program, and there's no unseen hand doing it to them. So when it comes time to change, the re redundancy of that cycle becomes a subconscious program. So now 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a memorized set of behaviors, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, hardwired attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions that function like a computer program. So then a person can say with their 5% of their conscious mind, I want to be healthy, I want to be happy, I want to be free. But the body's on a whole different program. So then how do you begin to make those changes? Well, you have to get beyond the analytical mind because what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. And that's where meditation comes in because you can teach people through practice how to change their brainwaves, slow them down, 
And when they do that properly, they do enter the operating system where they can begin to make some really important changes. So um, most people then wait for crisis or trauma or disease or diagnosis, you know, they wait for loss, uh, some tragedy to make up their mind to change. And my message is why wait? And, and you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering, or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. And I think right now, the cool thing is that people are waking up. When life was in the other forms of life that you see on the planet, nature determined a certain compulsive, instinctive ways of functioning. Once you become human, these lines have been removed. You can act consciously. That means what you call as human potential is not of any kind of measurable limit. It can go as far as you desire or as, as far as you have the courage to walk. So when we say human potential, unleashing human potential, it is not about reaching the peak, it is a trajectory. Because what our life is, is a combination of a certain amount of time and energy. Time is rolling away for all of us at the same pace. If you sit, it rolls away, if you sleep, it rolls away, if you do something, it goes away, if you don't do anything, it goes away. You're happy or miserable, it goes away. Time is running out for all of us. So it's only the energy that you can do different things with. If you bring your energies to a certain level of intensity and possibility, what somebody does in ten years, you may do it in one year. This means if you live here, for hundred years, it feels like in people's impact that you have created, it feels like you lived here for a thousand years, simply because you have managed your life energies in a certain way. So for me, a human being being impactful means, how conscious have you become? This is very important. Because if you're in compulsive cycles, then your energy gets wasted in so many things. If you observe people, in a day, let's say, let's take twenty-four hours, in that anyway most people by prescription in America, they sleep for eight hours <laughs> So eight hours means one-third of life is gone. In the remaining two-thirds, they have to eat, they have to, you know, shower, bathroom, this, that, all this, another two, three hours gone. So literally fifty percent of life is gone, daily basis, just for basic maintenance of this life. Fifty percent of the time is gone in maintenance, remaining fifty percent what they have. If you look at every single move that they may make with their body, their thought process, their emotions, you will see a whole lot of it is happening in compulsive cycles. Or in other words, if you are little sensitive to life, you will realize you are the biggest issue in your life. So this is one thing that I'm trying to do with people, that you are never the issue in your life. I'm not the issue. My thought, my emotion, my body is never the issue. My thought, my emotion, my energy and my body are my instruments of function. They are not impediments in my life. But I would say for ninety percent of the human beings, their own body, then the compulsions of the body, the compulsions of their thought, the compulsions of their emotions, are ruling them most of the time. So when you yourself are a problem, well, you're on self-help. If your business fails, it doesn't matter, did you grow? If your business succeeds, it doesn't matter, did you grow? And I found that really liberating because I was feeling like a failure for failing consistently. But when Rao changed my mental model, and he, he uses the word mental model, I started seeing failure as simply a means to growth. So when you see failure as a means to growth, you become immune to failure. And that is the real beauty here. So, Rao's rule is also best illustrated in this, this, this really cool quote I, had, I saw a friend share on Instagram. And it says this, grow so fast your old friends have to get to know you all over again. So I want to introduce you to a term, right? I call it ROSE, rate of self-evolution your rate of self-evolution. Your rate of self-evolution or your rose must be the ultimate thing in your life. In other words, your life needs to be about personal growth. Many of us forget that. We make our life about our children. That's wrong. 
If you look at the concept of conscious parenting, which Shafali Sabari teaches, your children are nothing more than the vehicle for your greatest evolution. She, Shafali, who has been on Oprah seven times, says, you are not there to teach your children. Your children are souls to teach you. Likewise, your work and your business is not there for the title or the money. No, those are bullshit constructs from the culture scape. You will get that if you make your business about making you grow. So personal growth becomes everything.